Hi everybody, Patrick here from EngineeringShock.com, PaintballProps, and ElectronicLessons.com. I'll link below. This video features the HQ Record and Playback module. It is um, on Kickstarter right now, and this is going to be the video manual. So let's talk about all of the different uh, blocks on this unit, and then we'll get some demonstrations down. This is the external audio input if you don't want to use the onboard microphone. This rail right here allows for you to connect to Arduino. These are the eight buttons. This unit can play one extremely long message or up to eight different messages. Uh, there are four modes of operation. Single message mode, two message mode, four message mode, and eight message mode, which, which we'll talk about later. This is the record and playback switch. These are your two power options. The power terminal block. On the left, you'll see a little uh, title like uh, V plus and ground. V plus, you'd place anywhere from 7.5 volts to 12 volts, and ground or GND is where you'd place your DC ground. This, of course, is a 5 millimeter power jack. Uh, many rewards come with uh, a 9 volt 1 amp AC to DC adapter. This is your optional uh, audio output, which you can plug into a set of computer speakers if you like, or your Bose player. This is your speaker connection. You'd place your uh, the, the included speaker uh, on this little two pin header. These two uh, headers here, they're labeled M, uh, M0, sorry, S0 and S1, S0 on the right, S1 on the left, and that helps you choose what mode of operation you want to be in single message, dual message, four message, or eight message mode. We'll talk about that a little bit later. This right here, this little two pin header right here, is your busy signal. Uh, the pin on the left, uh, is normally high, 5 volts, and it goes low when a message is being played, just in case you want to int uh, introduce that into your Arduino code. The sample code that I'll be providing for this Kickstarter will include a signal coming from the busy line. On the right side of that header is just a simple ground connection, GND. And right here, we have a little uh, selector selecting between standard mode, no jumper attached, meaning you're using your onboard microphone to record, and if you place a jumper here, you're using the external um, audio input from your computer. And the neat thing about that is while you have to be quiet when you're recording, you can also superimpose your voice using the microphone. So if you have a, uh, something being played and you want to introduce your own voice at the same time when you're recording, you can use both the audio input and the microphone. Right here we've got a little uh, jumper. It's, it's a little two pin header uh, labeled FIL for filter. Uh, we're just always going to keep that jumper on there. And lastly, we've got a two pin header right here labeled PU for pull up. And that is only used when we're using uh, the uh, audio output as opposed to the speaker. So when we use the speaker, we remove that, that uh, jumper. And when we are using your audio output to com connect computer speakers, we place the jumper on the pull up resistor. And that adds a pull up to the line. So let's talk about the speaker and the microphone. We're going to use the microphone to record eight different messages. We're in eight message mode right now, and in order to be in eight message mode, we have to remove both the S0 and S1 jumpers, and that places us in eight message mode. You'll see the, uh, the switch is in the upper position right now, and that's record. So, what I have to do, oh, I'll talk about the other jumpers too. So I've got, since I'm using the speaker output, I've got the PU, the pull-up jumper, removed. I've got the filter jumper connected, and I've got the uh, EX, jumper removed. So I'm only using the mic, I'm not using the audio input. So with the switch in the on position, what I'm going to do is I'm going to record eight different quick messages. Hello, my name is Patrick. This is video two. This is video three. Sound bite four. Sound bite five. Sound bite six. Sound bite seven. Sound by eight. Now, I've got those recorded. What I have to do is I have to remove power because this is a microcontroller. I can't just switch it on the fly. I have to remove power and I have to put the switch in the lower position, which is the playback position. Now I'll press all of the buttons sequentially and play back those messages. Hello, my name is Patrick. This is video two. This is video three. Sound by four. Sound by five. Sound bite six, sound bite seven, sound bite eight. Now, one thing you might notice is when you're recording, after you have to wait about 
uh, 250 milliseconds after you're done saying what you have to say before you end up before you let go of the button, or else you get cut off. Now listen to these two, these two sound bites. They were cut off. Sound bite five. Sound bite five. See how it got cut off? Sound bite six. But this one didn't. Hello, my name is Patrick. In fact, all of the other ones did not. So if I want to re-record these two. Sound bite five. Sound bite six. What I'm going to do is I'm going to remove power. I'm going to. Place, I'm going to place the switch in the upper position, the recording position. Plug the power in. Sound bite six. Sound bite seven. And hopefully, by removing power, I'll go back to playback mode, and hopefully, those two don't get cut off this time. Sound bite six. Sound bite seven. Perfect. So now I've got my eight different messages um, recorded. Before we move on, there's a few things I want to I want to talk about. I want to talk about the message modes, and I want to talk about the the maximum durations of uh, uh, of each soundbite. So if you have, uh, first of all, let's talk about um, let's talk about sampling frequency versus duration. This module has a maximum duration, a programming duration of 682 seconds, but that's using the lowest sampling frequency. And the sampling frequency is, is determined by an onboard resistor right here. Now, for the Kickstarter campaign, uh, in, the, uh, in the surveys, I will, be allowing from, uh, I will be allowing the pledges to determine whether they want uh, either a maximum of 682 seconds, 554 seconds, sorry, 584 seconds, 512 seconds, 454 seconds, 408 seconds, 372 seconds, or 341 seconds. Now, that's confusing. What I mean is, the longer the maximum duration of audio recording, the lesser the audio quality, because you're using uh, a lower, a much lower sampling frequency. Now, the highest quality, which I've got right now, I've got a four, uh, 47k ohm resistor determining the sampling frequency, uh, I can record a maximum of 341 seconds on here. So if I'm in 8 message mode, each message can be 341 seconds divided by 8. If I'm in 4 message mode, I can, use, I can record 341 seconds divided by 4. If I'm in 2 message mode, 341 uh, seconds divided by 2. And if I'm in single message mode, I can record up to 341 uh, seconds. So that might be a little bit confusing. I'm going to talk about that a little bit more later. Again, we can choose between these modes of operation with these two jumpers. Before we move forward, I wanted to talk quickly about this table. When you purchase the set, either in kit or assembled form, or pledge towards it in the Kickstarter, what you'll ha I'll be offering the option of is you choosing your sampling frequency. And what I mean by that is there's a resistor on the board labeled ROSC, and that is your sampling frequency resistor. You'll notice by this table on the left there's a... a, a there are seven different options for the sampling frequency and uh, the, uh, some full durations on the left. So the full du recording duration of the chip is on the right. So if you use 189 kilo ohms in the, the ROSC slot, you'll get a sampling frequency of six, uh, um, 6 kilohertz, which gives you a maximum recording duration of 682 seconds. However, if you want to double the quality, literally double the quality up to uh, 12 kilohertz, You'll, I would place a 447 kilo ohm resistor in the ROSC slot, which would give you a maximum of 341 seconds. Now that that's a, that 341 seconds is still a lot of time, uh, but you have the option. You just get better sound quality with a, a, a faster sampling rate. And so when you pledge uh, in the uh, or when you purchase, you will have th uh, this table to reference, and you can choose which resistor. And I will place the resistor in either the DIY kit or I'll solder the resistor in place myself and test the unit. Now let's again talk about uh, message, uh, message modes uh, 1, 2, 4, and 8. This table builds on what we were just talking about and as well shows you how to select on power up between uh, message modes. Uh, so for the, just to give you an idea uh, to build on what we were talking about before, if you choose either uh, a total duration of 682 seconds or 341 seconds and you are in a certain message mode, uh, this is essentially how it breaks down. I'm rounding up, so in, if I'm using uh, a total duration of 682 seconds, then single message mode, my single message can be up to 682 seconds. In two message mode, divide that by two. Uh, in four message mode, divide uh, 682 by four. In eight message mode, divide, divide 682 by eight. 
and so on. So I rounded up for these two values just to give an example. Uh, again, uh, sh uh, for the choosing message modes, if you leave both of the jumpers unshorted and open, not connected, then you'll be in 8 message mode. I usually use 8 message mode because even at a 12 uh, kilohertz sampling rate, uh, 43 seconds per message is, is usually more than enough. But if you want to choose between these two, between these four different modes, you just need to short the appropriate jumpers on the uh, S0 and S1 headers. And so 1 equals shorted with a jumper, and 0 means open. All right. Now that you've listened to me yammer on for a bit, what I'm going to do now is I'm going to leave my speaker connection connected. And we're going to use uh, a stereo connector and a two-pin jumper right here on the EX header. We're going to short that. And what we're going to do is we're going to uh, record something using our, our, uh, our computer, a YouTube, uh, a YouTube sound bike. And after we're done that, we're going to test it. Then we're going to go back and we're going to superimpose our voice uh, onto another sound bite. So again, when you're recording, you want to be quiet. You don't want to you don't want to want to add in your own audio to the sound bite. So all I'm going to do for this is I'm going to place place the unit in record mode. I'm going to make sure that my YouTube sound bite isn't extremely loud. And what you can do on YouTube is typically you can you, know, you can either uh, each YouTube video has the option. I'll show you in a second of uh, minimizing the audio output volume. So we're going to do that. We're going to bring it down to about 25%. We're going to plug this in. We're going to press record at, and at the same time start the sound bite. As soon as the sound bite is done, we're going to let go of the button. When you're recording your sound bite, you want to keep the volume between here and here if possible. Uh, you can obviously experiment. It's just if you bring it all the way over here, when you record it, the audio sound will clip and you don't want that. So I'm going to bring it right here. I'm going to Press as soon as I'm press record on the on the ES or sorry on the um, HQ audio recording module. I'm going to press the button. I'm going to press this. It's going to start recording. As soon as I'm done, I'm going to let go of the button on the uh, on the HQ module. So let's get ready. I've got the unit powered on. I'm in record mode. I've got my right hand on the mouse, my left finger on the message button. I'm going to use message one and let's give this a try. I'm going to click them both at the same time I'm going to hold. What I've done is I've removed power, turned this, the, the playback switch into the down position, which is playback, uh, plugged the unit back in, and now... Star Wars theme. So I just recorded a short clip of that, and that's it. I can also play my other uh, recordings. Sound by two, sound by three. And there you go. So that shows you how to uh, record using the uh, external audio input. Now, if we want to, what we can do is we can record an external audio sound and talk into the talk at the mic at the same time, and uh, and and basically add our voice to the mix. This is why you have to be quiet when you're using the external audio input. So let's try uh, adding a sound bite and talking over it. I've got my one of my favorite Breaking Bad scenes up on YouTube. I've uh, set it to the exact point where I want to start recording. Uh, yeah, Mr. White. Yes, yeah, science. If you've ever seen Breaking Bad, if you haven't, it's your loss. Great TV show. So I'm going to power it up and making sure I'm in record mode. And I'm going to use message two for this one. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to start the video, and I'm essentially just going to follow what Jesse says. So he says, yeah, Mr. White. I'm going to say after that, yeah, Mr. White. He's going to say, yeah, science. Then I'm going to say, yeah, science. Then we're going to see how it all pans out. Yeah, Mr. White. Yeah, science. And let's see how that turned out. I've powered down, and now I'm back in playback mode. Switch in the down position. Let's see how that turned out. So I got a little bit over enthusiastic and, and uh, was too close to the mic, said, said, yeah, Mr. White, yeah, science, way too loud. And so you'll notice that uh, I'm actually louder than him and, and he's clipping, or I'm clipping rather. Yeah, Mr. White, yeah, Mr. White, yeah, science, yeah, science. And clipping means that I'm essentially uh, overdriving the input. I'm not going to hurt it, but it's clipping at the top. 
and so it might cause it might say it sounds almost like a little vibration but anyway it came out quite quite well it's very easy to do if you don't want to um, impose your the, your the surrounding sounds or your voice simply just keep quiet when you're recording your sound bites or if you want to talk and add yourself into the sound bites you can do that it's that easy okay so now I don't want to use a speaker I want to use uh, I want to use a set of computer speakers or my Bose player or whatever what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna connect to the audio output to my computer speaker and then what I'm going to do is I'm going to I'm going to take uh, another jumper I'll just use this one for now I'm going to place it over the PU header pull up and then what I'm going to do is I'm just going to plug it in and let's listen to some of our sound bites using this our set of computer speakers <laughs> Very good quality, very good quality. And of course, you can make the volume louder or softer. So let's try our Yeah, Mr. White, Yeah, Science. Yeah, Mr. White. Yeah, Mr. White. Yes, yeah, Science. Yes, yeah, Science. Okay. And a couple other sound bites. Sound bite three. Oh, I've already recorded over sound bite four. Sorry about that. Sound bite five. Sound bite six. So there you go. Uh, very, very simple to use. Now, let's talk about interfacing this with your Arduino. There are two areas of interest when connecting with your Arduino. On the upper side, the two pins, uh, Busy and Ground, GND. Uh, we have two GND connectors on, on, the, uh, on the board, one in the upper header, the Busy connector, and one on the lower uh, header. So when, when the unit is idle, when it's in standby, the Busy line sits at 5 volts. When the unit is busy uh, playing back a message or recording a message, then the LED turns on and the busy line goes to zero volts, low. So that helps when you're trying to uh, when you're trying to control things. Excuse me with your Arduino, and I will be contributing uh, sample code, uh, a bunch of sample code and well commented code to uh, pledges and those who uh, purchase this unit in the future. So uh, let's look at the lower the lower um, header set. There are ten pins here. V plus, which is 5 volts, a regulator 5 volts, uh, GD for GND, not enough room there for GND, so I just had to put GD, 87654321, those co correspond to the buttons, uh, S8, S7, S6, S5, all the way down to S1, and so you can play back using these pins, and these pins also sit normally at 5 volts, so what you want, when you pull, when you pull a line low for a minimum, a minimum of 100 milliseconds, uh, it will play back that message. So all you need to do is digital write you the G your GPIO of choice in your Arduino low. And again, I will provide code, but just to give you an example, pulse that low for 100 milliseconds, then write it high again, and your message will, will play back. If you pulse uh, another low, uh, if you send another low pulse uh, mid mid playback, then it will cancel playback, and you'll be back in in a in standby mode. So it's that easy. It's very easy. Uh, all of your GPIO outputs from your Arduino that are connected to any of these pins need to be set high by default. So digital write GPIO high by default. And you only pl pulse low when you want to use your Arduino to record or playback. So that just about covers it. Always happy to answer questions. Uh, feel free to message us on, uh, offline at... Uh at uh, engineeringshock.com or paintballprops.com or through the Kickstarter. One thing I do want to mention though is every time you change between record and playback mode, remove power and wait five or ten seconds so the capacitors can drain. This is a microcontroller, so uh, like with any microcontroller, if you haven't, if you've made changes when power is off, but you just remove power and the capacitors haven't drained and you power back on again, uh, it might wake up in an unknown state. If that happens, don't worry. Just always make sure that once you've removed power, you've made changes, that there are at least five seconds between when you've powered off and power on again or else your uh, microcontroller might uh, start in an unknown state and it might misbehave. If that happens, again, don't worry. Remove power. Uh, you know, whistle for five seconds. Power back on, everything should be hunky-dory. It doesn't happen often, but I have myself, I'm always in a hurry. I unplug, power back on, and then, and then you know, things can happen. You're not going to damage anything, you just might confuse the chip. In any case, check out the Kickstarter, it's linked below. Thanks for watching. Uh, this unit will be up at engineeringshop.com by March of 2016. Take care and thanks again.